And here we are, Nick. Another episode of our DCT Live. And uh, usually, most of the time, uh, we're, we talk about our pelvic pain. And uh, today, we're going to be talking specifically about our women's pelvic pain and all the all the different um, presentations and and obstacles that we have seen now through all the research. And since we're doing, we're the only ones doing this research, it, it seems like I, I really feel like um, we're the only people that women and men can uh, come to for the straight truth about. Well, well we're, we're the only people doing non-invasive pelvic pain treatment for both men and women. Um, traditionally, women are, are, are funneled towards uh, pelvic pain physical therapy, which is a lot of internal work um, and a lot of work in, on, on the core. And there's a lack of understanding at how critical the pelvis and the SI joint and uh, what the effects uh, of being a woman and having a tendency towards being hypermobile or having done a lot of yoga or having childbirth um, or all these different factors, hernia surgery, C-sections, whatever it is, um, there is a dramatic effect on the strength of the muscles that connect to the pelvis. And none of that is addressed by internal pelvic physical therapy. So we are here, we are here to explain to you the, the differences well, the basic difference between a traditional male presentation of pelvic pain and why maybe so far you haven't resonated with it, um, some of you might have, but I want to I wanna break it down very simply for you so you can understand the trajectory and the roadmap that we're going to lay out for you in the female course. Um, we will literally be changing the uh, sort of the roadmap for you and making it much well, and the journey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The journey because this there's only a few not a few, but there's a set amount of uh presentations for men, but like we were talking okay. about earlier, Nick, with women it's really all over the map because there's too many opportunities and there's too many environments that uh that can create a pelvic pain a presentation yeah. we can we, i can give you an example it can be as simple as you stepping off the curb wrong and your si joint going out and oh. that, that could yep. be your trigger for pelvic pain yep and um, then there's then and we always uh, discuss that uh most of the time what we've seen is that women or uh Women athletes or women that are very active tend uh, to or can present like men, but most of the time they don't because the musculature, the uh, like the hormonal makeup, the uh, musculature isn't there, and 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 the shape, the just just the just the necessary shape yeah the width of the I mean, pelvis the width of the pelvis is wider so they call it the q angle the the angle from where your femur is going to your hips down to your knees is more of an angle um the most important thing to understand about female pelvic pain is when i've worked in the clinic and women come in with pelvic pain the vast majority uh have Either their glutes are completely shut down, not not accessible at all, um, or they have hypermobility to the extent that their muscles have become so weak that they're trying to leverage off their joints, but their joints are too loose, and so it creates a pain, which then inhibits the muscles even more. So it's like a it's like a catch twenty two. Until they learn how to activate the muscle um, extremely gently and feel a burn right in the belly of the muscle, that is what is going to protect the joint and then ultimately strengthen and reduce the hypermobility. 
that then will allow you to do the fascial release work, which is ultimately necessary to repair the bone pain. So one big question, though, uh, Nick, that I I always want to ask uh, doctors is why why do doctors and physical therapists not take a look at at the actual causation? Uh, because they think that the causa the causation is where the pain is. That's a very common. It's a common problem in medicine is they treat the symptoms and they don't have a good understanding of what the root cause is. And it's not surprising that that's the case because DCT and resistance stretching. We've been I've been doing it twenty years, but nobody knows about it still. Nobody understands. And I've been doing it for five, and it's still nobody knows about it. Right, and nobody, nobody out there is talking about the difference between connective tissue tension or fascial tension, which is what yoga stretches, and muscle tension, which is what is helping keep the integrity of the joints and the bones in the right position. So I get people who come in all the time. I have someone come in, I have, I have a man come in with a, a ruptured disc in his back, six millimeters, seven millimeters, whatever, terrible disc bulge. He can't touch his toes. Then I have a woman come in who can put her palms flat on the floor, has the same six millimeter bulge at the same location. What does that tell you? That tells you that her muscles are just as tight as the guy who can't touch his toes. Right. Otherwise, how would you have the pressure on the spine? Right. The difference is women can generate hypermobility so they can compensate with their joints to create range of motion, but they're ignoring range of contraction. That's why yoga is such a terrible thing to do unless you're doing a type of yoga that emphasizes resistance. So Anusara yoga used to be my favorite until John Friend became a sex cult leader like all these crazies. <laughs> um, Anushara Yoga, if you can find a good teacher, they teach biomechanically correct yoga. They have great progressions. They even speak in a language that is almost similar to DCT in terms of how to isolate contractions. That's, that's good yoga. Bad yoga is when the teacher is trying to get you to find your way into a position that your body can't get into. And right. you force it, which ignores muscle tension, stretches the wetsuit or the fascia, allows you to have an aesthetically good-looking pigeon pose, but destroys your joints in the meantime. Well, and, and, and one thing that women have over men is that their, their bodies, due to pregnancy and the ability to become pregnant, and, and their pelvis is to... Uh, is basically made to widen to ten to ten uh, centimeters. It's it creates an environment that invites much more hypermobility. That and their bodies produce oxytocin. Right, right. right. Oxy That's it. Um, and oxytocin creates laxity and ligaments. So a big problem is post postpartum. There's no there's nobody teaching, uh, po you know, post-pregnancy uh, strengthening and stretching to, to correct, you know, diastasis recti, to correct. Um, well, know. even uh, even even episiotomies, they're just cutting you right up, and they're not fixing that scar tissue. Yeah, hyster hysterectomies, yep. uh, hernia surgeries. It doesn't it doesn't matter. The the, the trauma. To that area will inhibit the musculature and if you don't turn the muscles back on you you're going to run into um most likely an si joint deficiency which allows the pelvis to shift which puts pelvic floor into chronic spasm well, so well, yeah it's well, it. about glutes too well this is what i want to say to all you women out there the most critical exercises that you can do and the reason why the program always starts with glute and adductors is because if you turn your glute back on, you stabilize the SI joints. And when you stabilize the SI joints, you can start to actually do the more complex DCT exercises that are going to resolve the pelvic pain. 
if you if you don't if you don't learn how to activate your glutes correctly, which is pretty easy to do, uh, you really if you haven't watched any of the recent webinars or any of the lectures I've given on how less resistance, less range of motion is a lot more effective, then you should really check those out or you should schedule a call with me or Rocco to learn how to do this. But DCT um, is meant to re-educate your brain to connect to the muscle belly first. So if you're doing a sideline glute stretch in 90-90 like we start with, and all you're feeling is the outside of your greater trochanter, which we all think is our hip, that big bone on the side of your leg, um, that means you're tugging on the tendons and you're not doing anything good for the muscle at all. So when that situation comes up, we teach you how to self-assist against gravity because gravity is even too much for you. Well, and 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 something that we found is there's so many women out there that do that work their adductors, work their abductors, work their glutes, work their uh, work their legs in general because they want to. Uh, it, it doesn't matter though because most likely they're using too much weight and they're just training their tendons to take on more force and more stress, and they're and that's. At some point in time, you're bringing all this tension and tension and tension in, and then something's got to give. You're going to have, you'll have a traumatic event. Yeah. I call it, I call it, so traditional physical therapy likes to fight fire with fire. Right. So if they see you standing in a posterior pelvic tilt, right, meaning your butt's tucked under like this, they say, oh, we need to strengthen your psoas so that we can bring you back to neutral. Now, that works. That actually works. You can actually fix your back pain. The problem is you fixed it by adding tension to tension. Right. So you basically winch your spine closer and closer together and cause probably the potential for a bulging disc. When we look at it in DCT, I see a posterior pelvic tilt, and I say, oh, we got to eccentrically release the glutes and the hamstrings to let your butt come back up, which alleviates pressure from the system and then you can work then you can work the other areas if there are if there are insufficiencies you know and then we can look and, and we can see deeper if you're not a releasing the tension and you're just fighting fire with fire you're just creating an environment that's that's literally meant to break and yeah. we don't, we don't, it's, a, it's, a we don't it's a destructive environment for the body. And yeah. furthermore, until you actually balance and release the tension from both sides, right? That's why we have the balancing muscle groups in the program. Until you release that and balance that tension out, there's no way that your joints will allow you to get into the posture safely that you need to get into to release the fascial line to tension. There's just no way you're 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 basically going to get into a yoga situation where you're overstretching the joints again. Well, and that's the reason why yeah. you could be training, you could be training, you could be training, and and we find that many people that tr many women that train at weights or whatever still have weak glutes. And then that's because none of, the, none of the machines at the gym are designed really ergonomically correct. Right. I, and if you gave me ten million dollars, I could redesign every machine in the gym to be ergonomic. <laughs> and I would be glad to do it. It would be it would be a great project. I, I in fact, when we were independently wealthy and however long and that that takes, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll make a gym. We'll fix all the glute <laughs> exercise machines. But yeah, like most of the time. Uh, they're fig they're concentrating on the on the gluteus maximus, and they're forgetting about the minimus and the medius, which actually um, are, and are even, even, more, even more importantly, they're forgetting about the outward rotators. Right. As I, as Rocco and I are sitting here, our legs are flailing out to the side. That's just how it naturally happens when you right. sit. Your legs flail out to the side. So the outward rotators are in a shortened position when we sit all the time. So they're getting tighter and tighter and tighter. 
unless we do a mitigation program to release the outward rotators, then we're going to have movement dysfunction through the hips. It's impossible not to, right? So our society and our lifestyles, the way we process our stress, the lack of amount of the, the fact that we run dehydrated constantly, all these factors are, you know, contributing to the health of your tissue. And when you start to stretch appropriately with DCT, you're going to notice you cut sugars out of your diet. You stop eating foods that are flaring you up or causing inflammation. You don't even have to think about it. It just starts to happen. And it's very, very beneficial if you can instead learn about it through going through our program and start making wise decisions and slowly weaning off of these things that are causing problems for you. Well, and, you you know, with inflammation, when you're creating inflammatory environments from, from creating tension, right, especially, especially women, they tend to not feel all that pain until they feel the pain. It's a, it's that, a, that, that, that's a, that's a function of the fat. So, okay. So here's something that's very interesting that has become ubiquitous with pelvic pain patients. When a muscle gets fascially restricted or gets too tight, it basically becomes numb. Yeah. You lose perspective that you can't even feel it. So a lot of times the reason people are overstretching or pushing too hard is because they don't feel anything. Right. But what they don't understand is if they push light enough, they'll feel the weak muscle start to turn on. And then they can do an eccentric contraction, and all of a sudden, they've torn the fascia that was binding that, that those superficial nerve endings, and they can start to feel the burn the right way. And, the, and now the fascia gets excited, the muscles turned on, and now we can do healing procedures. And now blood can actually enter into the areas that need to be oxidated and given nutrition. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is what we're finding more and more. And why I really wish that had a doctor or, or, a, or a, a traditional physical therapist would actually pick up a book on fascia or, uh, or just watch one of these videos. It, it's not taught in the. It's not taught in the curriculum yet. Oh no, no, it's not taught in the curriculum. But there is, you know, like you can pick up anatomy trains. You can pick up, uh, you know, the different fascial. Uh, you can watch a Gil Headley video. This, this is a, this is a deep. This is a deeper conversation with the dysfunction of of academia because. <laughs> I, I went through, you know, it took me five years to get through the, the program, and it was literally five years of just torture because all he taught me was fall prevention and diabetes because those are the two biggest problems in our country. And you can only sit through so many lectures on falling and diabetes before you realize that you should self-educate. So. Well, you, and you mentioned something that was very, very, very important, Nick, about, about our lifestyle. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, even you know, 30 years ago, we weren't uh, dealing with a lot of, we were dealing with female pelvic pain from pregnancy, from uh, those types tailbone things, sacrum things, but we weren't dealing with the pelvic pain type stuff that we're dealing with now only because sitting a lot of women aren't going aren't staying home and having children many women are going to work and they're sitting or or they're standing now here's something that's really really weird that we're seeing now everyone's got a bursa desk or or one of those standing desks but now they're instead of sitting, they're standing, and they're creating the same, the same issues, but opposite. Right. But we talk about this in the program how you should only spend between forty-five to sixty minutes in, in any one position. So you stand for a while. You actually have a an ergonomic stool that rises, so you can lean against the stool and be half standing, half sitting. 
you sit in a regular desk chair for part of it, you know, for an hour. You just have to keep changing your position. Well, and what we do here, you know, uh, what I do is I'll do uh, sumo squats. I'll do lunges. I'll yeah, do you can. You can lunges. I do. I would rotate it leg. I, 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 I teach. I teach people all the time how to use the knee pillow and do a ninety ninety lunge under the desk while they're on conference call. <laughs> Yeah, so so, and we're seeing that that the more women that are in the workplace and they're doing more uh, sitting type jobs, customer service jobs. Uh, a lot of lawyers we see, a lot of you know, a lot of doctors too, we're seeing that are women that are because they're sitting so much and they're not chasing and. And don't think they were sexist or whatever, but in the past, you know, like they were chasing after after kids. They were, they were cooking. They were doing this. They were. It was very different. It was a very different world when your whole world is about sitting and about creating that clamshell and your body healing into one position, right? Because that's all your body wants to do is is it, it wants to create the most efficient way to do your work. Right. And then when you're not doing it, when you stand up, when you try, you, what happens is you create a pain environment. It's as easy. I mean, it's a simple. Well, the, the, the silver lining for women is that uh, in my experience, and I've worked with quite a few female public floor pain patients now at this point. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, it's very quick to fix, believe it or not. It's much quicker to fix than male pelvic floor pain um, because of the fact oh, I think women are smarter than men first. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's, an, that's, another, that's another situation. Yes, they're more, real, they're more willing to, to follow instructions and not get ahead of themselves and go too hard. Um, and I think that's because they they respect the they they don't think that they're you know smarter than the expert telling them what to do. Um, right. In general, the men are cavemen. They just think harder, but faster, better, and that's not the case. But my point is, is that you'll you'll be incredibly surprised at how quickly stabilizing the pelvis via the glutes and the adductors uh, lends itself to a relief in, in symptoms. And that's not to say that when you have more severe symptoms that they're going to go, that those symptoms are going to resolve quickly because that's a deeper lying problem with the connective tissue. But a lot of women coming in with pelvic pain don't have fascial restrictions yet. They, they maybe just gave birth. They maybe are, you know, they, they haven't been suffering with it for, for five, ten years, like some of the, the guys uh, that are coming through. So you, you're in a good position if you find this course early to learn skill sets and tools that will serve you for the rest of your life and that you can share with your friends and your family and your children uh, so that they never get into the same situation you got into. And the next webinar, uh, we are going to talk about the fascial restrictions and where and why and where they cause vaginal pain and, or uh, pain in the genitalia. Uh, because that's a big, that, that can be if you are, if you haven't fixed this yet, three years down the line, if you have uh, sacrum issues or whatever, you're going to have fascial issues. And that's where it all ends up. It's the weakest link. Right. And and I would I would love for anybody who's out there going to a pelvic pain therapist that's doing internal vaginal work to release the pelvic floor or into rectal work to release the, the pelvic floor. Um, I would love to know how many of those physical therapists actually follow up with you to find out if you're feeling better or not. Because yeah, I mean, I would love that too. Because all we do, all they all is we're take, we're trying our our hardest to get, and and our program. I don't want to brag too much on it, but I will. We have uh, 
We have a help desk. We have ten minute calls you could do. You could do uh, thirty minutes uh, if you want to do uh, consultation. But um, help desk, email. Uh, we in have the, help the comment, people. the comment section, the comment section alone underneath each exercise yeah. where people ask questions and then take the time to answer them. You can pretty much find an answer to, to almost all your questions, and if you can't, you can check in the Facebook group for somebody who's gone through the same thing as you. Um, exactly, and I, we've. I, I, real quick, I, I'm I'm becoming fed up with hearing the same thing over and over again from people that that got roped into doing public floor PT for a year and never got any resolution of symptoms. And we're finally told that it's all in their head and that they should be better by now. Yeah. And it's not true. The, it's not in your head. It's and, not in your head. And, and they're literally full of shit. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I will, I will go out there. I'm going to say, though, traditional PT, pelvic PT in conjunction with a good resistance stretching regimen or going through DCT, it can be helpful. It's just, it work. It, oh, it's okay. a band-aid, but if done with something going after the root cause, it can help. So I'm not poo-pooing the, the entire profession of pelvic physical therapy. It's just that they don't know half of the story or more. So you're, you're going to get, you're get, if you start pressuring them for information or asking them very specific questions, you're going to get the runaround, and then they're going to make it, they're going to put it on you like it's your fault. Right, and it's not, it's not, because there's a physicality and also a, a, a neurology that goes along with this, and unless you understand fascia, unless you understand how the musculature and the way that the joints work. Now, some people can spout anatomy, uh, you know, all day long, they can sound really, really smart, right? Uh, they don't have a New York gangster accent, and they can sound really, really great. But then when it comes down to it and you start digging deeper, what happens is they, they're all superficial. And like I said, I you know, Nick doesn't like me to curse or, or be as, you know, abrupt as I am, but there's, we listen, we have hundreds of people that come to us every month that we have to listen to all this stuff that these horror, and, and they're horror stories, Nick. I mean, you know, you know, you have to deal with this at, at the clinic. And then, and then we got to fix. We're constantly fixing other people's mistakes. And it absolutely drives me crazy that we have to fix other people's. And, the, and most importantly, when you tell somebody that it's all in your head and you should be better uh, by now, you are damaging someone's psyche because you don't know. And, and the physical therapist is too lazy to pick up, to do their own self self-education about what's going on. And also the second problem is because what you'll find is traditionally they, they do not follow up with the patients that stop coming back. They didn't stop coming back because they got better. <laughs> they stopped <laughs> coming back because it wasn't working. Right. I just talked to to one of our uh, our uh, um, our clients so that's that's a, a woman she went through two years of 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 like the runaround. It was basically the runaround, and she came to DCT, and she she's so happy that we do all this research, that, that we take the time, we do these calls, we we want the feedback so that we can make better decisions for you. I I, I learned I learn something completely new that's profound every single day. I work with a public pain patient. And so why? Because we, we, you know, every single time we see, now everybody thinks that they're isolated and they're, um, but there's a lot of people that present the same, what the same, have the same symptoms per se, but the causation is very, 
can be very different because you can have the same result, but it can come from especially with women. With men, I had a I had a call this morning with a guy, and I said, "Let me let me guess. You were an athlete for your adolescence through till till college. You finished college. You got a job." You became sedentary, and then you went out to play, and your muscles remembered how to play, but your body had a traumatic break, and then all of a sudden you had pelvic pain. He was like, how the hell did you know that? It's like, because right. they're all the same. Yeah, well, well, it's it becomes now predictable for us. For doctors, for physical therapists, it's not. We can, we can literally predict, and we can tell you the chain of events now. and. You know, I'm sorry, we're we're pretty confident now. <laughs> After five years of being in the trenches, we're pretty confident we have what you need. Oh, yeah. and, and trust me, the people that fly from all over the world to see me in L.A., they are complicated situations. They've had multiple surgeries that they never should have had. They've been on every drug known to man and destroyed their guts. They've done the worst of the worst of their bodies. So my days sometimes are incredibly intellectually exhausting because I have to try and figure out not only how to correct pelvic pain that they're going through, but what the hell happened for them to get there in the first place. So, Well, well and we're going to be doing a, doing a whole webinar, most likely, on uh, pudendal neuralgia and, and that... <laughs> that absolute misdiagnosis to 98% of the people out there. And, and you can have it, too. And and we're going to go into that. But, you know, you, you could have nerve entrapment, but sur surgery is not the, not the cure for that. Yeah. And, if you, and, if, and women, if you're suffering from pelvic pain and they keep telling you it's a urinary tract in infection, don't take the antibiotics, please. Please. No, because it's going to make it worse. It's absolutely going to make it worse for you, and it can create more damage. Uh, in, 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 in less the, unless the lab results come back definitive, like with a bacteria, then then you can take them. But most of the time when they tell you, oh, it has to be a urinary tract infection, let's just put you on a course of antibiotics, but there's no lab results that definitively show it. Do not take the antibiotics. It's it, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, and they're drying and they're creating a chronic a dehydrated state, which can literally cause your fascia to become sticky. And, and they're, they're destroying your microbiome in your gut, yeah. which is essential for healing. So, at any rate, I, I don't want to get started on medication. Yeah, I just, yeah. we can um, we can go on forever. I want to stop and. All right, here, Nick, thank you so much. It, it's always, always a pleasure to do yeah. this with you every no, week. This every is, this is, as difficult as the last four or five years have been trying to learn about this stuff, it's been the most rewarding process I've been through because, I mean, every week I get at least five calls from people telling me that they, their lives are saved now because they were on the verge of suicide or, you know, I mean, it's a serious, the pain is real. And it's a serious condition, and to be able to make a difference non-invasively and remotely is that's a very rewarding feeling. So I'm happy to do it. And we're getting more and more involved. Like we're not going to uh, BS you. We were more concentrated on, on the male side for a very long side, a very long time, and then now we're we're really switching our, our focus because. We're, We've seen so many different presentations, and um, we and, want to fix this for women. And, and I think a big part of this is that there's a huge group or uh, contingent of men going through the program who have created a hypermobile body type that's very similar to what the most common presentation in women is. And the solution really brought it to the surface that, you know, we can make something much more effective and much more uh, specific for female pelvic pain, and it's and it's and it's our it's our it's our duty and obligation if we're going to be uh, if we're going to go up against the medical community, 
which is what it's looking like is going to happen just because um, nobody, none of the, none of the urologists, none of the people I'm trying to get on board are very receptive. Um, really not. And I don't know what, like, this is a whole different conversation, but I don't know why they wouldn't want to, because doctors and, and the medical uh, community are supposed to abide by the Hippocratic Oath. And they're actually, they're not, do no harm. It, 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 that, I mean, simple answer is it, it's the insurance racket. They are governed by how they oh, can it's make money. money. Yeah, right. So, but, but anyway, th besides that, in five to ten years, what we're doing right now is going to be thought of as self-evident and obvious. Yeah, they're going to they're going to go. Oh, you aren't doing this? No, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's going to be. Is it? It's definitely going to be self-evident. I don't. I don't mind though because that'll mean millions of people will get help that weren't getting it before. So, well, especially since there's a billion people, fifteen percent of the world population has some type. Of a pelvic issue, yeah, and 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 it also it's it can come on sporadically. People suffer from it intermittently their whole lives and don't even right. know. So and we can fix it, uh, you know, permanently for the rest, you know. So just like uh, that, you know, today today is the first day of the rest of your lives. So let's <laughs> let's take a look at that. Yeah, so. Please send us questions. Um, we, we apologize it took us this long to give you the attention you deserve, um, but we 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 have answers and uh, there's no stupid questions. So please reach out and we'll take yeah. care. Of you. And the more you ask, the better you know. Like the better we can uh, direct. Uh, the program. The, so, more we, the more we can learn from you, so the yep. better we can make things. Yep. Work. Nick, thank you so much. I'm Rocco Castellano for DCT and DCT for Pelvic Pain. Again, we're so happy that you're here. Right on. All right. And I'm Nick Bartolotta. Yeah, that's Nick, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>